Today I want to talk about covering the soil. Nowhere in nature is the soil exposed. So what do you put down and what do you do about it? So if you think about nature for a minute, there is literally nowhere in nature where there is exposed soil. It is covered up with something. So whether that be a forest floor covered up with mulch from fallen leaves and trees and things, or grasses or even weeds. So what do you do about it? You're building a homestead, maybe from scratch doing a project. Be very wary when you disturb any grassland or soil because as soon as you do, Mother Nature is going to try and... Oh man, are you guys annoying? Purple Martins. Mother Nature is going to try to cover it up. So be very careful when you expose soil. But one of my favorite things to do on the farm, and it's a good way to go broke too, is gravel. I have spent, I can't even tell you it's embarrassing how much on gravel. And in my entire yard site is gravel and I even got uh, another uh, two semi loads delivered to <laughs> keep the gravel up. But when you put down gravel, first you have to scalp off the soil wherever you're putting a road. So again, think very carefully where you're scalping and exposing the soil and getting rid of grassland, but you have to scrape off the soil, put down pure clay and build it up with pure clay, which packs down extremely nice and then cover it with some kind of aggregate. So this is, it is covering the soil and no weeds are gonna come up on you and you need gravel for your yard and where you're gonna drive and things. Off of our gravel, uh, anywhere in the yard, I have wood chips. We've hauled probably 11,000 cubic yards by now of wood chip mulch. So that is covering the soil. So we put down a thick top soil, you know, scalp it off kind of the... Hi, Jess. <laughs> Hard to make a video. Scalp off the road put clay down on the road, put gravel down, take that good soil, put it in the beds and then cover the beds and mimic the forest floor with wood chip mulch. So this is just utility grade wood chips. Oh my goodness, you guys. Utility grade wood chips or in some, I had bought uh, post peelings. Uh, we even use straw in some spots to cover up the soil. Now, I am planting a whole bunch of trees in kind of a shelter belt uh, over here. So it, putting it in plastic mulch again is covering the soil in strips with a drip line. So it's been drought, uh, so the trees need to be watered with a drip line. The plastic holds the moisture in. It also prevents the grasses and things from blowing, blowing in and taking out your trees, which they will. The only extreme good success I've had with planting trees is in plastic mulch, or if I have enough wood chips on hand, uh, wood chipping it uh, very, very thick so the grasses and weeds don't come through. Unfortunately, with plastic mulch, you have to till really deep and really fine for it to set that plastic mulch properly. But in between the rows, now I have exposed soil, so I threw down some uh, drought tolerant grass seed in between to hoping that the grass seed takes before Mother Nature brings in thistles and foxtails and other weeds and things. So if I don't cover the soil, Mother Nature's going to and Mother Nature is usually a prick and it's going to bring in thistles and weeds and dandelions and foxtails and make a big mess of things. So I'm trying to cover up the soil with grass. So in our uh, main kind of household outside garden here, it is exposed soil and I did till this. There was so much uh, dead plant matter from last year and weeds growing in that I did till it really good. Um, so our no-till stuff is kind of in little areas or in and around fruit trees and the fruit trees themselves. But for this garden, for planting rows of carrots and 
peas and beans and squash and stuff in rows. Um, Jess is just laying out the drip tape over there again after I tilled, because we're gonna plant this today. But this is exposed soil, so we have to fight weeds, right? Mother Nature's trying to cover it up, whether grasses or weeds. Mother Nature does not want exposed soil, but in a garden, you kind of have to for a lot of things. Just till it the traditional way. So we plant and then we weed by hand with little tools and stuff um, to keep that soil exposed. But then this, because it's exposed, we're gonna lose topsoil a little bit, lose nutrients. So I have to add manure and nutrients and things to the soil. And so this little garden here is exposed soil. But in our garden where there's exposed soil on all the edges, I have wood chip mulch. And then where I switch to kind of where I'm driving more frequently, then you switch to gravel. So around the pond here, uh, I have to cover up the clay with something. Even clay is gonna start to grow weeds. So I pack gravel down, kind of made a path around here. And then down where the water might be, I'm gonna put some landscape fabric and actually even a beach area kind of over there, bringing some sand over landscape fabric or covering it up with rocks. Uh, in a country like Japan, which is a small country where they don't have access to ridiculous amounts of straw and wood chips, they actually do rock gardens. So they'll cover up the soil with pure rock and grow in rock. But the whole idea is covering up the soil. So when you do cover up the soil, that means it's gonna hold in moisture. It's gonna hold more microbes and life in the soil. The soil is not gonna erode away. But in a garden like we're doing, you know, I just keep having to add it. And you know, after we drip line it and plant it out, I might end up uh, straw mulching the whole thing. Like I did some of the beds, uh, little beds over here, kind of in the orchard area, but we'll see. If not, it's gonna take a lot more water. These are a row of, two rows of cherries and it, this is all wood chipped. When I first planted the cherries, I put plastic mulch around each one in little squares. Uh, then when they got established, I took that out and either mulch it with straw or wood chips. Here's a little patch of garlic that is with straw because we kind of ran out of wood chips and straw breaks down faster but it also will blow away in your high winds wood chips do not blow away so they are my absolute favorite but on the other side of the pond there so i have some rocks covering soil but on the other side of the pond i have three strips of trees now in order to keep trees alive you can't just plant them in a grassland the grass will kill them and take them out and the trees won't get enough water and you'll lose the trees to the weeds and the grass essentially. So unfortunately for that plastic culture, I have to rototill and rip it all up really fine so that plastic sets really, really well. But this gives me a near 100% survival rate on trees. In between there or in that pasture, I don't want, want to touch as little as possible on natural grassland because those grass roots go down super deep hold the soil I don't want to disturb that so I did kind of the absolute minimum for that and then threw down some seed in between but mother nature is gonna gonna expand that grassland in and around the plastic mulch as well and eventually just cover it up because exposed soil it's like mother nature wants to cover it with something anything and if you don't do it with a grass that's something good, it's going to do it with weeds. It's been drought, and when we first bought the land, it was flooding. So wherever in the pastures that was flooded, then the water receded, then you kind of have exposed soil. That water kind of killed all the grass. What comes of that? Mother Nature brings in foxtails and thistles, right? And that's the biggest issue. So in this, dugout area that I cleaned up really nice, kind of one of our water sources near our yard site. Um, I really cleaned it up and taking it down to clay to hold the water in and moving the organic matter, burning it out, putting it 
in other places and then growing a better grass and pasture with that soil or moving that soil to our gardens. But some of our other pastures had low spots and it's just solid foxtail and deadfall. So I'm slowly pushing the deadfall together, burning it out. That's creating good soil, trying to till up where the foxtails are and then throw down some alkaline salt tolerant and drought tolerant grasses and things to try to stop mother nature's foxtails and grow something nice. So with wood chips, you're mimicking the forest floor and that's preventing weeds, holding in moisture. It's good for everything. It's good for soil health and growing soil. But this is, I haven't got enough wood chips yet in between some of this and the orchard. The wood chips composted and are making really good soil. But what's coming of that, I'm getting some grasses and weeds and thistles and dandelions and the odd foxtail kind of in here. So I'm going to have to kind of hand weed this if I don't get the wood chip material to keep adding, adding it up. But the wood chips turn to soil, then that's exposed soil, right? In a forest floor, every fall it mulches itself, all the leaves off the trees and it re-mulches it. But I, my trees and orchard aren't established yet. So it is now exposed soil. So I have to mimic the leaves falling off the trees in a forest and put something down. You can also uh, cover the soil with vegetation, not only just grass, but here we have perennial walking onions. This should be cleaned up a little bit because some thistles blew in there. But this gets thick enough that it impedes all the other weed growth. Here's a chive patch that's uh, in between tr fruit trees. So I put some straw kind of around apples on both sides of this little patch and then hope, hoping to get this thick enough, these chives, that it stops the weeds. But there is some hand weeding we have to do. There is some thistles I see coming up in there and we should start uh, doing that before they get too big on us and definitely before they go to seed. So while I'm making fun little videos and go to edit them, Jess is working hardest here. She's, uh, after I tilled our garden, she's redoing all the drip tape lines and securing them. Are you doing a good job? I better stop and go inspect after this. But uh, because this is exposed soil, it requires a lot more water. If this whole thing was mulched. He thinks he's the boss, but he's not. Me. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, if we did mulch this, it's going to uh, take much less water, um, which we might do. So once the uh, the plants get, you know, yay high or whatever, we might go in with some straw. It would maybe take 10 or 15 square bales to lightly mulch this whole thing. And then it requires a lot less water, but cover up the soil. Now in the greenhouse too, our soil gardening, we don't want exposed soil either. So we did heavy mulch in here and that mulch broke down fairly fast. So when you make new beds and do, uh, you know, uh, bring in soil, you know, it's not the best soil, it takes a while. So now we have worms and microbes and things in there. So we mulched it with cedar mulch and the soil's eating that and it's breaking down. As our soil gets extremely rich, I add more mulch and it's not gonna break down as fast. So same thing in here, we have some thistle pressure cause I did have topsoil from outside. Uh, so I do have to do a round of hand weeding, just been busy and then drip system and then heavy mulch. Um, just remulch it with cedar mulch and cover up that soil, even in a greenhouse. Let's go for a little rip to my old shelter belt that I planted years ago, and I'll show you that. Now behind me is our shelter belt, uh, the first one that we planted. I forget how many thousands of trees are in this one, but um, when I first planted it, we were overwhelmed with wood chips from tree trimming services. I didn't know what to do with it. The pile was so big. So I wood chipped the first, I don't know, maybe 200 feet down there. And it's kind of hard to tell, but the trees that were heavy mulched with wood chips are literally three times the size 
is some of the ones way down there that was just exposed soil. I did put these in plastic mulch, no drip line. It was just too much. Um, but those wood chips held it in. But what's really cool now is the shelter belt is now big enough that it's mimicking a forest or it is a forest. So every fall, the trees shed leaves and it's mulching itself. So it's covering up the soil. Now in the shelter belt, uh, maybe once a year, year, I might rip down with a mower if I can still squeeze through until the trees get so big that it, there's no path. Uh, but mow down some of this grass because there would have been some exposed soil in there. But it's mulching itself with the covering up the soil with its own uh, foliage that it sheds every year. Now, farmer's fields. So traditional farmed fields. It's not as bad, as bad as it used to be with seed drills and things, but there is, they do leave stubble on traditional agriculture fields now, so it does stop some erosion. But over the years of, you know, traditional farming, your, your super hybrid wheats and canolas and stuff, uh, all the topsoil is lost, it blows away. There shouldn't be any exposed soil anywhere in nature, uh, even though, you know, a little bit of stuff like your garden and, and things, you can have exposed soil. But traditional agriculture, we lose topsoil and it takes nature uh, by itself. No interaction if humans disappeared. A hundred years to make one inch of topsoil. So eroding it away is not that great, but some new farming practices like seed drilling, leaving stubble on the field does prevent erosion, but e like uh, where I planted these trees, this was a traditionally farmed with big equipment area in here. And it took a long time uh, to even establish pasture grass and things because there's no nutrients and no topsoil. So it's kind of hard to establish grass and trees when there's no nutrients and no topsoil. Whereas natural grassland pastures that I have, um, you know, the roots go down a ridiculously far away and all the soil is covered up. You don't want to disturb that, right, where possible. Now, today's video is brought to you by Grub Boots. Uh, type Grub in the comments and uh, enter to win a free pair of Grub Boots. So I really like these grub boots. I could wear them all day long. They fit rather snug to my calf. Uh, so whether I have to walk in mud of some clay or some soil, or I'm working in the garden when it does rain, which is pretty rare, or it's tick season now. I tuck my pants in them, right? Like a goofball and no ticks can crawl up my legs. They'll go on my pants, but I'm walking in grass right now and it prevents that from happening. So usually I wear my steel toe work boots when I'm working on gravel or, but if I have to walk in the pasture or I'm working in mud, I put on my grub boots. Highly recommend them. So check them out and type grub in the comments and I'll announce a winner, I don't know, in about a week. All right, thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.